this will be both a fun and practical problem. And the problem is this. Suppose that you have a ladder, because who doesn't have a ladder? Everyone needs a ladder. And you lean it up against a wall like that. Uh, what angle can you put it at? Uh, so let's go to the extreme. If you're this way right there, I mean, don't do this. Don't put a vertical ladder, because once you start climbing up here, then there'll be a torque, and yeah, bloop, you fall over, and that's bad. Okay. Also, if you get really low like this, a really low angle, uh, it turns out that it's just going to slip. It's going to slip down. So the question is, how far can you put it and it not slip? And so I'm going to, I have some values here. We may not need them, uh, but this is my problem. So I have a ladder of length four meters, a mass of five kilograms, and then the coefficient of friction right down here is point static friction, 0.4. And I'm going to say there's no friction up here, which isn't true, but we can make a better problem later. We want to start with this, a simple problem. We can also later go up and say, well, what if a person's climbing the ladder? What would happen then? We could even, and I don't know that I'm going to do all these, but we could model uh, a falling, slipping ladder. That would be kind of fun, but I'm not going to do that here. If I want the ladder to be in equilibrium, then the net force has to be zero and the net torque has to be zero. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram for the ladder. So I'm going to redraw my ladder right here. Now what force do I have acting on that? Well, I have the gravitational force. If it's a uniform density ladder, then I can put the gravitational force as though it were, were acting at the center of mass, which is in the center of the ladder. What else is acting on the ladder? Well, the ground right here is pushing up on the ladder, so I'll push up right here. I'll call that N1. And obviously, these cannot be the only forces because it will not be in rotational equilibrium because these two forces are at different locations. They could be the same magnitude and the center mass would be stationary, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't be, it wouldn't be in equilibrium. So I'm going to need another normal force from up here, right? So this, there's no friction, so it just pushes uh, normal to the surface, but the surface is vertical, so that's gonna be this way. I'll call that N2. See, I knew there were gonna be two. That's why I put that one as one, because I was thinking ahead. I've done this problem before. And finally, if there's a force pushing in the positive di x direction, we'll call that the x direction, then I'm gonna need a force pushing in the negative x direction, and that's my friction force, which I'm drawing too small, F, F, like that. And with that, let's call this the x-axis, that the y-axis. I have the following. In the x direction, the forces have to be zero. F net x is zero. So what force do I have in the x direction? I have N2. And then I have minus the friction force. And that's one equation. In the y direction, F net in the y direction has to be zero. And that's going to be equal to N1 in the y direction and the gravitational force minus mg equals zero. So it looks pretty simple, right? But I don't know the friction force. I don't know N2. I don't know N1. Now, at the, at the smallest angle, I'll put that as a note over here, at smallest angle, theta, F friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Remember, in general, the magnitude of the static friction force is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Uh, so because it can be whatever it wants. You know, if this friction force is too big, it's not going to make the ladder move up against the wall. That's, that'd be crazy. So it's just a force of constraint but it has a maximum value. And so we're, we're trying to find the smallest angle, so we need the most friction right there. So we can use this relationship over here. And I'll go ahead and put that in, because I don't care about the friction force. Um, in particular, I care about the angle theta. So if I put that in, I get N2 minus mu S N1 is equal to zero. Okay, so I have N1, N2, uh, I do know mu, I, but I don't know in one down there. So I still am short. Now I can put one more equation, and that's to say that the net torque is going to be zero. Remember that we define torque in 
and this is the algebra-based physics definition. It looks like this, R, F, sine theta, where this is the distance from the point where we calculate the torque, which we have to pick. This is the force, and that's the angle between R and F. Now you could also write this as R perpendicular F, which would be the perpendicular distance from the point to the force, or you could write this as R F perpendicular. But the, the, all of these need a point, so we're gonna have to pick a point about which to calculate the torque. I'm gonna pick right down there is my point O. You can pick anywhere, it will work anywhere, but I pick there because this isn't my first rodeo, okay? So if I say that, I can put the net torque about point O is zero. And if I do that, all of these forces will exert a torque. Now, if it would make the, the thing rotate clockwise, that'd be a negative torque. If it's counterclockwise, it'd be a positive torque. That comes from the right-hand rule. No one ever tells you that, but it's the right-hand rule. So if I look at the torque due to these two forces, they pass through the point about which I'm calculating the torque. So both this force and that force have an R equal to zero, so there's no torque. This is like pushing on the hinge of a door to try to open it. It doesn't work. Okay, so there's no torque there, and that's why I picked that, because two of these forces don't even appear in the equation. Now for this one, remember this angle right here is theta, and this distance from here to there, I have a right triangle. So this distance right here, I'm gonna draw it off to the side. It looks like this. This is L over two, this is theta. And so I want, if I find this distance, it'd be R perpendicular, and I can use this to calculate the torque. So if that's L over two, and that's angle theta, then this perpendicular distance would be L over two cosine theta. So this gravitational force, uh, I, well, is it gonna be a positive or negative torque? Well. If I just had that one force, it would make it rotate this way. That's counterclockwise, so it's gonna be positive. So I have mg, that's the force, and then the perpendicular distance is L over two cosine theta. Now I need to do this force up here. Uh, you could do, just so you know, you could do R and then do this and sine theta, but theta would be, uh, this angle right here, which is the same as what we did. It, trust me, it turns out the same thing. Now this torque up here is going, the torque due to this normal force is going to be negative, right? Because that would make it rotate this way, the clockwise direction. So I know the force, and again, I'm going to use the perpendicular distance, R perpendicular, right there. So if I draw, make sure that line is perpendicular to the force, uh, I need to find that distance. Well, if this is theta, then this is theta, right? because they're parallel lines, bisecting of parallel lines. This length right here is L, so this would be L sine theta. So I get negative into L sine theta. Now I have three equations, three unknowns. I'm trying to solve for theta right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just solve this for uh, theta, and then we'll plug in our values. So I'm gonna add this to both sides. I get into L sine theta equals mg L over two cosine theta. I notice I can divide both sides by L and that cancels nice. Uh, and I'm going to divide both sides by N2 and divide both sides by cosine theta. And I get sine theta over cosine theta equals mg over two into. And then I can say sine over cosine is tangent. So this is tangent of theta is mg over two into. I'm gonna get another piece of paper. Now, I don't know n2, right? So I need to find an expression for n2 to put in here. I know m and I know g, so that's all cool. So let's go up here to this equation uh, and actually I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna solve this for N1. So I'm, I'm, if I solve that for N1, I get N1 equals mg. And if I put that in up here, I get N2, move that to the other side, equals mu s N1 equals mu s mg. Now I can put that in down here. So I get tangent of theta equals 
mg over 2 n2. But n2 is this. So I get over 2 mu s mg. Well, look at that. Mass cancels. So it doesn't matter how massive your ladder is. G cancels. So you can do this on another planet. So tangent of theta equals 1 over 2 mu s. So theta would be the inverse tangent of 1 over 2 mu s. Now, notice that mu has no units, and which is good because you can't take the inverse tangent of something that has units. So that's fine. It actually worked out nice. Um, and let's just uh, put in our values here equals tangent inverse 1 over 2. And I said mu was 0 0.4. And I, my calculator, where did it go? I found it. So here's my calculator on clear. I'm in degrees mode, so that's fine. I'll get the angle in degrees. So I'm going to say inverse tangent 1 divided by parentheses, because I have two of them. I could just do 0.8. 2 times 0.04 is 0.4 is 0.8. So I'm just going to say divided by 0.8. But I already put the parentheses, so i got to close that. And then i got to close it for the tangent. I think that's it. Equals. And I get 51.3 degrees. Now, imagine that I go back to my problem right here, and I have less friction. I have less friction between these two. So let's say I have a mu of 0.2. What should happen to the angle here? Well, the angle should be greater, right? Because the the more I get this back, the less uh, the more the less torque this is going to make the frictional force. And so I'm going to have to to balance that. I'm trying to think that's true or not. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put in over here. Let's do uh, clear. Uh, inverse tangent 1 divided by, if I do 0 0.2, that would be 0 0.4, close parentheses, and I get 68 degrees. So it is lower friction, higher angle. And that's that. Of course, if you have a person up here, it's going to change stuff. Uh, if you have friction up here, it's going to change stuff. So that's just your simplest problem. Uh, I, I might, Like I said, I might do those other problems, but right now I think that's a good place to stop. Hope that helps.